Yo, what's going on guys? It's Ras. In this video, I want to go over my day one dungeon build that's going to be coming out for the 30th anniversary. Now, this is obviously a build that you can run in pretty much anything in this update, but I figure specifically I want to talk about the dungeon because I know a lot of people are going to try to complete that day one, obviously going into it fresh, and they're going to want a build for that. So this video, I hope is going to help you out if you play a Warlock because this is what I'm going to be running. And this is a pretty normal standard Warlock build that people have been running for a little bit, but this is involved all around the Stasis subclass and some of the buffs that we're going to be getting with the 30th anniversary. So starting off with weaponry, let's just talk about it really quick. I have a Fate Bringer, I have a Cartesian Coordinate, and a Sleeper Simulant. Now I'm running a Sleeper Simulant because this is actually going to be getting buffed. It's going to have four in the magazine, which is going to be really, really good. And it's actually getting its damage increased a little bit as well. Now you might be wondering why I'm not running something like Black Spindle. And that's because I think it actually is going to be pretty good. But you got to remember, we're still in the same season with particle deconstruction. So pretty much nothing is going to be as good as you know, particle deconstruction. So there's a good chance people are still going to just run like Cartesian Coordinate and a Super Simulant or even still 1k is going to be really, really good. But I'm going to be running Sleeper because of the buff and I feel like it's going to destroy. So getting into the subclass, obviously we're going to be playing Shape on it and I run Ice Flare Bolts. This is just going to make it whenever you freeze an enemy and shatter them, it's going to spawn another little freeze tracker that goes on to freeze another enemy. If you want to run something else like Frost Pulse or even Glacier Harvest, you can, but I still just like running Ice Flare Bolts just for the ease of use. And we have Bleak Watcher. Obviously, this is going to spawn your little turrets and slow and freeze enemies down. It lasts a really, really long time. And we're going to be able to have infinite uptime with it. So for the fragments, we have Whisper Fissures. So we're just going to be able to increase the burst of the stasis. We can do more damage, act clear better with it. Uh, Whisper Endurance, so the slow from our abilities are going to last longer. This is also giving us additional 10 strength, which is really good. This just makes the turret slow enemies down even more. Then we have Whisper of Change. So when you're near a frozen target, you actually get resistance. This is also giving you 10 recovery, which is really, really good. You're going to be freezing people everywhere uh, with this build. So literally, you always have this resistance of it if you don't kill them. It's also like a little way you can play around it. So if you freeze the enemy, they're obviously not going to be shooting you. So you can sit beside them and you're just can stay resistant now whisper of torment so you gain grenade energy when you take damage from targets so this is also gonna help you keep your bleak watcher up a lot because you're gonna be able to constantly just get grenade energy because you're always gonna be taking damage now i know they are changing the cooldowns with the 30th anniversary update but i still think this is gonna be really good it's still gonna be very very effective even if it takes a little bit longer to get the cooldown but if you run something like 100 discipline you should be fine but now get over into the armor speaking of stats i definitely would say run 100 discipline with this build 100 recovery is pretty much always on a warlock so you can get your rift back as fast as possible and recovery is just nice to heal faster then i have 90 strength right here i had 100 but i actually changed it uh so i could actually run more reserve ammo which i'll talk about in a second i like running strength just in case you, you know you need to just throw your melee out in just a random moment something's chasing you which is really good you always have this on cooldown but honestly non strength is probably more than enough but if you want to get to 10 you can i was just running the three 100 stats but honestly with the double reserves i think it's gonna be better but getting into the helmet i'm running i have another world so literally all the cooldowns that i have are just gonna be even faster so it goes past 100 discipline it's going to be even faster in 53 seconds which is really good also i have a linear fusion rifle ammo finder for super simulate i have taken charge so i mean come charge light when i pick up an orbit light then i have hands on because i had a point left over and then i just have some additional stats to get to 100 discipline again into the arms i have protective light so whenever i'm charged of light and i take damage i am going to actually get a huge amount of resistance when my health bar gets to red this is insanely strong it's one of the best pv mods in the game you can pretty much just always run this with any build and you're just going to be insanely strong always run this in any in-game content as well because you just get basically double the amount of health that you have i'm also running a fusion rifle loader from the artifact and just a hand cannon loader mod since i'm running fate bringer and a fusion rifle again if you want to run other weapons like with a horde or just anything you can like a sniper rifle uh you know the stochastic variable i have is really good just anything but this is just the main uh build i like to run at clear you know major damage and then obviously you know boss damage but the reason i don't have any champion mods is because notoriously in every single dungeon we've ever had shattered throne pit of heresy and the prophecy there's not been a single champion in them at all this could change with this one as of what we know already there's no champion so i don't really think that you need to run champion mods but you know i have five energy right here that i can actually you know work around with if I need to put something on, I just switch these up, but I really don't think you'll need them just based off what we already know. That again, just another discipline mod to get to 100 discipline. Now, on the chest piece, I have one point left over, so I just put shield break charge on so I can just get a charge of light if I break a shield. If you want to run something like 
uh, elemental light right here. So when you kill enemies with your super, you can spawn well as you can. This is just kind of one of those things you should do in there left over. But I have two linear fusion rifle reserves. And the reason I have this is because if you don't know, with double linear fusion rifle reserves, you're going to be able to carry 16 shots with sleeper simulate. And it's also getting buffed to have four in the magazine. And with the catalyst as well, that is what is getting you to 16 shots. It is insanely good. You're going to have ammo to just insta any heart target from far away or just even up close to but it's also going to be insanely good for false damage because of things like particle deconstruction this thing is going to be a monster you're going to have an insane amount of ammo with it then you're also going to have an insane amount of damage it is really 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 good then on the chest piece again just a discipline mod to get to 100 discipline now on the boots i have powerful friends so whenever you come charge your light nearby allies also become charge your light this is also giving you 20 mobility which is nice then fusion scavenger so i can pick up more ammo for my critician coordinate and super similar which is nice then three strength mod to round everything out then on the bond i have obviously particle deconstruction and also have radiant light so whenever i cast my super all my allies become charge your light and this is also giving you 20 strength just like powerful friends is giving you 20 mobility so the way this combo works if you cast your super you're going to get your allies charge your light if they're running powerful friends in return that's going to get you charged light if you're running powerful friends then that since you became charged light you're also going to get in the charge of light and then again vice versa and you just get to max charge light it just bounces off each other it's really strong and this even works with something like taking charge as well you just pick up an overpower so you're always going to be charged of light with this build you're always going to have protective light active which again is essentially just doubling your health if you really try to think about it then you also have all your you know good stats all your reloads everything like that just to make everything easy and you're really focused on cb sentinel being able to just take out those hard enemies and you're going to be able to do a lot of boss damage and then for the subclass you have your bleak watcher grenade just slowing everything down you have icer bolts freezing everything on the battlefield you're shattering everything slowing everything down get a bunch of grenade energy back and just being super duper tanky between protective light and whisper of chains and this is just going to be a very very strong build i guarantee this is probably one of the top builds for warlock right now i would definitely recommend running this if you are trying to get a day one completion of the dungeon which i feel like most of you probably are if you're watching this video but i also would recommend to have an access to swap the things like luna faction boots and your well if you need to because obviously in bossing situations uh you might need to use well you know to do more damage but again you know just for the main thing of the dungeon just getting through i'm always always going to be running the bleak watch grenade and it's going to be really really good i also would recommend having focusing lens as well uh so again if you do uh play well so you have a hunter on your team he can throw his super you can stand in the well and then you're going to be doing more damage as well definitely have power equity destruction and focusing lens unlocked on your artifact and honestly that's about it just make sure you have enough energy to put some other stuff on if you need to change it but this is the main build right here and i really really hope this helped you guys out if it did consider doing all the normal youtube stuff it really helps me and our community grow by getting these videos out there for everyone to see i truly appreciate it but thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one peace